Grizzlies are federally protected as a threatened species since 1975 due to being nearly exterminated by hunters and trappers early in the last century. Since the protection was enacted, grizzlies have made a huge recovery. It's a remarkable conservation success story. The grizzly population has grown from 136 in 1975 to 728 in 2019. Scientists think that the Yellowstone area is now recovered and may reach its capacity for grizzlies. As grizzly populations grow, and with millions of tourists visiting Yellowstone each year bear attacks are on the rise. However, tourists aren't the only ones at risk. Charles Mock, age 40, lived in the Park Gateway community of West Yellowstone. Charles worked as a Montana backcountry guide for over five years for Backcountry Adventure, which provides tourists with snowmobile rentals and tours in Yellowstone's National Park and the surrounding national forest. Charles had a great love for the outdoors. His passions included hiking, fishing, photography. Here are some photos taken by Mock. He enjoyed his job as a guide to numerous visitors in Yellowstone. Charles was born in Provo, Utah, but grew up in Southern California and later moved to Pocatello, Idaho. While living there his father took him to Yellowstone National Park, and he fell in love with it. In April of 2021 Charles loaded up his camera with a telephoto lens and then headed to Baker's Hole Campground. He plans to take some pictures of nature. Charles always carried bear spray, and usually a pistol, but today he decided not to bring it along. He parked and hiked south, away from nearby Madison River. About 30 minutes into his hike he paused to take photos. As soon as he began to hike again a male grizzly protecting his moose carcass came in full force toward Mock. He was ready for the charging bear, he pulled his bear spray out and sprayed in the direction of the charging bear. The spray did not hit its target, instead it sprayed back in his direction. Within seconds the male grizzly attacked. The bear grabbed Mock by the head and bit down causing significant injuries. At 3.45 p.m. Mock called 911. During his 49-minute emergency call he told the dispatchers he had been taking pictures when he was attacked. He told the dispatcher the bear was still circling him. A medical helicopter was dispatched but had to be cancelled due to snow. It took searchers nearly 50 minutes to locate Mock. When they finally located him, he was propped up against a tree with bear spray in one hand, the other hand was bitten completely off. Mock had used that hand to protect his neck during the attack. He had suffered extensive scalp and facial wounds. Mock was transported by snowmobile to an ambulance that rushed him to Eastern Idaho Regional Medical Center in Idaho Falls, Idaho. He underwent several surgeries to repair the damage. Due to brain swelling, he was placed in a medically induced coma. Mock appeared to be on the road to recovery. Two days later he had a massive stroke, and was declared brain dead. His family all agreed to have his organs donated. His body was flown to a hospital in Utah where surgeons removed his liver, heart, both kidneys and his pancreas. After the attack a team of investigators, including bear specialists, 
and fish, wildlife and parks game wardens with a dog hiked to the area where the bear attacked to investigate the scene of the attack. As they approached the area they fired cracker rounds, and hollered a few times to alert the bear they were near. As they got closer they noticed the brush moving near a small tree. The team stopped, and readied their firearms in case the bear charged. Within a few seconds the bear charged out of the brush with his head down and ears pinned back, running at full speed. The bear slowed near a deep snow pile, after clearing the snow pile he charged again at full force. It was clear the bear was not mock charging, so the team fired. A forest service officer fired several shots into the bear to finish him off, and to prevent pain and suffering. During a necropsy, inside the bear's intestines, investigators found moose hair, cartridge, muscle tissue, along with other tissue that was later found to be from another grizzly bear. Investigators believe the bear encountered Mock after being in a very recent fight with another grizzly, defending the moose carcass, or he fought the other bear taking the carcass away. Investigators believe those interactions contributed to the bear's overall aggressive defense of the moose carcass toward the victim as well as the investigators when they arrived on the scene. His camera was found at the scene and placed in his vehicle. Family took the camera and later investigators recovered it. However, investigators can't confirm if any of the images were deleted prior to it being turned over to them. The bear that attacked Mock was a well-known bear in the area. He was a 20-year-old male that was captured back in 2003 near Cascade Creek as part of the park's annual grizzly study. He was tattooed and collared, then released back into the area. His last known location before the attack was the February after his release, he was denned north of Norris Giza Basin. Over an extended period of time, male bears many times lose ear tags and radio collars when fighting with other male bears, additionally radio collars are designed to drop off bears. No functioning microchip could be located on bear 449 during laboratory examination, which was understandable since it's been nearly 18 years since the chip was implanted. The grizzly had no history of being a nuisance or having any other run-ins with humans. For many it's hard to understand going into grizzly country, and living a lifestyle that puts you in danger. Scott Riley, manager of Sports Rider, a snowmobile dealership in the area, said people don't understand that for us who live here, that's what we do every day. It's not like we're just running around in the forest, tempting them. They are everywhere. He went on to say that a bear was just in town two days before Mock was attacked. Riley said he fished, hunted hiked and kayaked numerous times with Mock over the past ten years. Riley said that he and Mock came across bears numerous times, and sometimes they would make bluff charges, running at full charge but always back down. Riley told reporters, I've held my bear spray 100 times but never had to use it. What happened to Charles could happen to anybody that walks into these forests at any given time. I would say if the forest kills me, the forest kills me. Grizzly bears are just a part of life for those living in communities that border Yellowstone National Park. Friends of Charles Mock say he knew the risks that came along with working, hiking and fishing around carnivores. Since 2010, eight people in the Yellowstone region were killed, including Mock. After the deadly attack on Mock, the area around Baker's Hold campground was temporarily closed to public use. An explosives expert was scheduled to come in and blow the carcass the bear was feeding on into tiny pieces to deter predators. This is a common strategy when a bear attacks someone, and it has the potential of posing a serious threat. Before sending in the explosive expert, a drone was flown over the area of the carcass to ensure no other grizzlies or black bears were nearby. The area remained closed until the tiny bits of meat were consumed by wildlife. The tragic event of Mr. Mock being attacked by an adult male grizzly bear and subsequently dying from the attack, was the direct result of Mr. Mock's own purposeful or random placed proximity to a moose carcass that an adult male bear had cached and was actively feeding on, the investigation concluded. 
A short time before the adult male bear attacked Mr. Mocket may have defended or claimed the moose carcass from another grizzly bear. If so, this would have contributed to the bear's extended aggressive defense of the moose carcass. A celebration of life was held for Charles Mock on Saturday, April 24 in 2021 at the Union Pacific Dining Hall in West Yellowstone to honor his life. When there are deadly attacks where bears kill or injure human, the grizzly is usually killed. More than 80% of grizzly mortalities are caused by humans. This involves direct euthanization due to attacks, car accidents or other human-caused fatalities. With populations increasing, grizzlies in Yellowstone are expanding their range out. Several years ago researchers in Yellowstone wanted to know how tourists heading into the backcountry affected grizzly behavior. The peer-reviewed Yellowstone study on grizzly bears looked at how they altered their behavior when people moved through or camped in the area. The study showed that grizzlies were twice as likely to be present in areas when humans were restricted. When people were near, Bears were more than twice as likely to only be present when humans were not active, at night when campers were sleeping. The data proved that human activity displaces bears from areas where they typically would want to be. The study proved that grizzlies have a natural avoidance to people. As human development expands, and bears roam further out from protected lands, grizzlies will be where residents least expect. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more from Wild Animal Network.